In this video, Dr. Boyd is talking about how to get ready for your anatomy ultrasound. He's also going to be sharing the different measurements that will be taken, and you will also get to know your baby's gender. Coming up. Hey, I'm Annabelle with Parently, and we help you give birth naturally. We bring you weekly videos to build your confidence in birth. If you're new here, then consider subscribing and ring that bell to stay up to date with our latest videos. We've also put together our four-step process to a natural birth, and you can check that out in the description below. Let's dive into this video. It's important to understand why we're doing this, but for many patients, the most important part of this sonogram or ultrasound is I'm gonna find out the sex of my baby. So let's talk about what we're looking at, what the obstetrician is looking at when they do your ultrasound. Now it's important to understand the timing. The timing is done between the 18th and the 22nd week with an optimal time around the 20th week of gestation. Now, if your doctor performs your sonogram earlier than that or later than that, that's not a problem, but ideally it's around 20 weeks gestation. It's important to understand that the reason the sonogram is performed is so that we can know information about the health and the growth of your baby. So what to expect from your sonogram and how is it performed? It's important to understand that you're gonna come into the office and oftentimes be asked to have a full bladder. Now the reason we do that is if the baby's sitting in your lower pelvis behind your pubic bone, oftentimes we can't see anatomy that low in, in your belly, so we ask you to have a full bladder. Now this can be a little bit uncomfortable but it's important to understand why we do this. We're gonna look at several things when we look at the ultrasound. The first thing is we need to determine the number of babies that you have inside your uterus. Now, oftentimes women have had an earlier ultrasound around the eight week mark, but if you haven't, this sonogram will confirm the number of babies that are inside your uterus. So after we determine the number of babies that you have in your uterus, we're gonna look at your amniotic fluid volume. Amniotic fluid is what the baby's swimming in. It looks very much like urine. In fact, it's made up of urine mostly from the baby urinating from the bladder. The placenta subsequently removes those waste products. So the baby's swimming in urine type of material, but it's sterile. That means it's clean. The next thing we look at is the placenta. The placenta obviously is very, very important. It's the lifeline of your baby. It's what provides nutrition to your baby and removes the waste products. The position of your placenta is very, very important. Oftentimes the doctors will say you have a front-sided placenta, it's called an anterior placenta. Or they'll say you have a back-sided placenta, that's called a posterior placenta. Or you have a placenta at the top of your uterus, that's called a fundal placenta. Or, concerning, you have a placenta that covers the cervix. This is called a placenta previa. Now if you have a placenta previa, Oftentimes you'll have to come back on subsequent visits at the 24th or the 28th week mark to see if that placenta has migrated so it's away from your cervix. Now after we have determined the number of babies, the amniotic fluid volume, the placental location, now we're going to do what's called the anatomy scan. And basically it's a scan of all the different anatomy parts of the baby. So we're going to start at the head and look at the baby's head and brain. We're gonna look at the baby's face. Do you, does the baby have two eyes, a nose, a mouth? Does your baby have a cleft lip? The next thing we're gonna look at is the neck. Does your baby have any tumors or masses on the neck? After we go from there, we're gonna go down to the chest. Does the baby's chest look symmetrical? In other words, does it look even? Inside the chest, we're gonna look at the heart. Does your baby have four chambers in its heart? Are the vessels coming off of the heart in normal location. Now the baby's lungs cannot be seen at this gestation, but we can often determine if the baby's chest size is small, that could mean that the lungs are not forming correctly. Then we're gonna move down into the abdomen. The abdomen, often called the belly or the stomach, is, is the structure from below the chest down to the pelvis. Inside the abdomen, we're gonna look at the baby's intestines. When we look at the intestines, we're looking to see if the baby has any constrictions of the intestines. Inside the abdomen, we're also going to look at the baby's bladder. The baby's bladder, just like yours and mine, fills and empties, fills and empties. In fact, I mentioned earlier 
that the amniotic fluid is mostly a urine type of product. Inside the abdomen, we're also going to look at the back side of the abdomen where the kidneys are located. Does the baby have two kidneys and do the kidneys look normal? Then we're going to look at the lower extremities. Does the baby have two legs? Does the baby have two arms? When we look at that, then we're going to subsequently do measurements of all of various structures in the baby's body. We're going to first look at the baby's head and measure the head. And the head's going to be measured in two dimensions. And we come up with two different measurements. One's called a biparietal diameter, BPD, biparietal diameter. And the other one's called a head circumference. Now we're going to come down and we're going to measure the baby's upper arms called the humerus bones. That's these bones right here. After we measure the humerus bones, we're going to come down and we're going to measure the abdomen. And that's called the abdominal circumference. The next structure we're going to measure is the baby's upper leg bones called the femur bones. After we measure these various structures, then we come up with what's called a composite measurement. And the composite measurement is a measurement that looks at all of the above described measurements and comes up with an average. And that average then should be within 10 days of your gestational age. So if we're doing the ultrasound at 20 weeks, the composite measurements of the ultrasound should be between 18 and a half weeks and 21 and a half weeks. Now, if the measurements are not in that 10 day time frame, we will have you come back and remeasure those various structures that we've described in about four weeks. Now, if the measurements are, are off dramatically, then we may even at that point send you to a maternal fetal medicine specialist called a perinatologist. And the last item that I, I want to mention is the umbilical cord. The umbilical cord is at the baby's belly button. This is what is the lifeline from the baby to the placenta. Now, after we finish this ultrasound or sonogram, which usually takes anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes, we will talk about the concerns that we as a healthcare provider have. Now, many times you're going to see what's called an ultrasound technician. You won't even see the healthcare provider at that point. In my practice, I did all my own ultrasounds, so I was able to talk to the patient immediately. But sometimes the healthcare provider talks to you as the patient on a later date about any concerns that might exist with the ultrasound. Either way, this is a very, very important scan. So the last thing on the ultrasound is what is near and dear to many of y'all's heart. Is this a baby boy or is this a baby girl? In other words, the gender reveal anatomy. Now, the reason I performed it last is because sometimes there was so much excitement in the room that the healthcare provider sonogram tech would forget to do everything that needed to be done in the sonogram. So I always saved that for last. The other, th other way you can look at this, save the best for last. So that's the most exciting part for so many of you as a patient. So this is it for an anatomy scan and a gender reveal ultrasound. I hope you end up with the boy or the girl that you wanted. Have a great day. Thanks for watching this video with Dr. Boyd on how to get ready for your anatomy ultrasound. If you haven't already subscribed, then click that button and ring the bell to stay up to date with our latest videos. Also, check out that four-step process to a natural birth. We'll see you next time.